Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad-free over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. Sunset Boulevard, movie written and directed by Billy Wilder, was released in 1950. Uh, it's a movie that I had not watched until recently, watched it for the first time. It's been on my list as one of the classics that needs to be watched. Obviously, Billy Wilder, an amazing director. I've been watching a ton of his movies in this past week, preparing for a top five that I will be doing on Sunday, uh, where I rank my top five favorite Billy Wilder films. Uh, but this one was one I was excited to watch and did and was pleasantly ex- surprised and uh, pleased with, similarly to most Billy Wilder films. I mean, he is a director I talked about and reviewed uh, Ace in the Hole a few months ago and just how great that was, how ahead of its time or seemingly how little has changed in many ways. Uh the sensationalizing of news stories uh, really uh, profit over people in in a lot of ways. Uh, this one tackles a bit of a different subject matter. We have, uh, on one hand, we have uh, one of the main characters is basically an obsolete silent movie actress uh, who is trying to make a comeback. She was big in the silent movie days, and now movies are all about are the talkies so all the people that used to be big before there was sound uh kind of moved on and just dealing with the short shelf life of female actresses in hollywood of the of those days um so you have that kind of main character in this film and then you have a screenwriter who's kind of Running from debt collectors, having some financial issues, but he's really well, rena- like well respected his his writing, uh, and and that, and he is on the run, trying to avoid uh, these 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 collectors, these debt collectors, and stumbles into this house that seemingly looked abandoned, this giant uh, house that is on Sunset Boulevard in L.A. Uh, kind of just kind of deteriorating and rotting on the outside, looked abandoned. So he ended up pulling into the driveway, into the garage to hide out from these guys that were after him. Uh, And in that, he ends up getting folded into and meeting this actress uh, who is uh, Gloria Swanson playing Norma Desmond uh, and William Holden playing Joe Gillis basically the writer and he stumbles into this situation and part of this situation like somebody lives there the servant comes out brings him out is like hey what's up she has this movie that she she's been writing for her comeback she wants to get back into the movies and and reignite her career so she is going to employ this guy who's a writer uh to do it and it's a win-win because he wants to you know, he's needs to make money and trying to, you know, hide from these people that are trying to collect the debt. So it's like a win win situation for him. Um, beautifully written voiceover in this film. It also shows you this movie starts off with basically the end of the movie. It shows you the very beginning of this movie is that there is a dude floating dead in a pool. And there's, uh, like, news paparazzi and cops are around fishing this body out. That's how this movie goes. Throughout the course of the film, by the time the end of this movie comes to to a conclusion, I completely forgot how this movie started. And when you see the character that ends up dead in the pool... Like, it hit me again, because it should be a situation where you're not surprised that this character dies, because we see him floating in the pool dead at the beginning of this movie. But this movie is so good that it made me forget how it started, right? It starts in a way to, like, hook you. It's like, ooh, there's a dead body. What's going on with that? And then it rolls into the story. So that's beautiful. That whole aspect of it is beautiful. 
The voiceover is narrated by the writer, right? This character that's the writer. So it's the voiceover is very flowery. It's very well written. Very, you know, it, it's all over the place, but makes sense because it would be something that a movie about a writer, somebody that loves words and to use words would have a monologue, a voiceover that would luxuriate in the use of words to kind of fill in the context and, and things that are happening uh, that the movie's not showing you. Uh, so I appreciated the voiceover as well. I thought it fit well. It, it was a little bit much, but once you kind of settle in, you're like, okay, I get it. And it's well written. There's some great lines uh, in that. One of those lines, which I feel is almost like a kind of uh, a critique of this movie what this movie is trying to communicate as well is when he's like in this house that's i don't know if he's seen that somebody lives there or not but it's this house that's like rotting away there's this line that this house is crumbling apart in slow motion which i love that line and it's so much what the main character Gloria Swan or Norma Desmond, this main character, this silent film actress, actress, she her character is basically crumbling apart in slow motion. Like her character is slowly losing touch with the reality because she's like this this discarded historic landmark of of Hollywood's past, but she has like this idea that she still you know still like right there like she doesn't realize that her time has passed she hasn't come to that conclusion um but then like so he's there where it starts out where it's like oh he's like just kind of hiding out now it's like she's hiring him to rewrite this screenplay for her which he's fine he's like sweet i'll be able to pay off my debts i'll be able to pay off my back rent she gives him a place to live and it's like slowly, very slowly throughout this movie, like he's slowly sinking more and more into her web, slowly relying on her more and more as she's basically like grooming him, right? She's, she's buying him new clothes. She's like slowly moves him into the house. And then you finally realize that like, he is only one of many men that have been brought in and groomed to be her new husband over the years. And that her first husband is her servant that helps like facilitate these things. The Many Faces is an ongoing abstract ink portrait series that I started many years ago. I release a new face every day. But go to InspiredDisorder.com to check them out. So many available. But as a listener to The Ray Taylor Show, you can save 10% when you use coupon code INSPIRED when you check out. So go to InspiredDisorder.com slash TMF. That stands for The Many Faces. Go check them out. Browse the entire collection. And when you decide on a piece or maybe multiple pieces, make sure you use coupon code INSPIRED when you check out. And you'll save... 10% as a big thank you for checking out my work, for collecting my work, and for listening to The Ray Taylor Show. And with that said, let's get back to the show. Like, it's crazy. And she's got, like, uh, you know, it's a beautiful home on the inside. Basically, her home is a shrine to her, her dead career. Like, just photos of herself everywhere in this beautiful home on the inside she has uh movies she has her own private movie theater a projector and a movie screen that's hidden behind a painting that every night she watches her old films so she can watch herself act she's somebody that's so lost in the sauce with who she was that she is so far detached from reality but he gets slowly slowly brought in slowly relying on her being groomed by her to be like her new partner you know he gets he gets to use her car he gets the new clothes he gets a room inside of the house and then there's this new year's eve party that kind of changes everything 
Like a lot of things happen. Like he's been, it's been this slow process of him slowly kind of just being wrapped or being like consumed by her. And then New Year's Eve happens where she's supposed to be having this party and he's getting, you know, one of the reasons he got all the new clothes is he's getting like a, a tuxedo with tails for this New Year's Eve party. And he thinks that she's inviting all of her own, you know, her older friends that come over to play poker with her. Uh, but instead, he realizes that it's just a private party she wants to have with him and that he's not because she's much older as well. He's a younger guy. She's I, I don't know the age difference. Not that crazy. But he's still like a younger writer guy. Hip. He's got, you know, he's, he's obviously into younger women or, you know, different women, but still like allowing these things to happen because they're happening so slowly. But it, it's this like divergent where it's like, oh, he ends up leaving. Because he's he's realizing that she's he's realizing what her ideas are for him and what he could end up being for her and like what that means to him. And he's like, wants to get back into his old life and like leave this. So he leaves her private party. You know, she's got a band playing. It's the, the dance floor is all to their themselves. They got all the refreshments they need. It's it's it looks like it would be a party for a lot of people, but it's just them. But he leaves. And something that we find out before part of this this uh, crumbling apart in slow motion is the fact that there's no doorknobs on any of these doors because that she's been suicidal in the past. And when he leaves on New Year's, she attempts to kill herself again. And uh, he ends up getting a call, goes back, and ends up giving up writing to, like, just be her dude. Just to be there for her. Like, he gives it all up. Which is kind of crazy. But, it, like, it was a turning point, right? He gives, he, he gave up his career. He's like, well, I'm, she can pay for all of my stuff. Why do I need to work? But that's not what he, his desires are in life. He wants to be a writer. He enjoys writing. But now he's not even doing that. He's just the, the trophy husband for this uh, retired actress. And then there's the scene where it's like one of the producers, Mr. DeMille, has been trying to get a hold of her. And she thinks it's because he wants her to come back. She thinks that she is still the star that she once was. So they end up going to the Paramount Studios and you see like how everybody that that works around all the people behind the camera on the camera, they recognize her and they show her all the respect. She's still a star within that community inside the Paramount Studios on the lot. She's a star. But in the public, she's she's so far gone. But in her mind, like going to the Paramount lot, it just feeds that ego that she has. That she's still like a, a, a desired star. She still gets fan mail. But the only reason she was caught in was because DeMille wanted to use her kind of wacky car that she has. So her servant knows that it's not like it, they were all thinking that's like, oh, this is it. This is her next stage of her career. She is going to have this comeback. But then her servant guy finds out that it's just their car. You know, the Joe Gillis finds out that it's just her car, that it's not her. And she doesn't she doesn't understand. She's not like she is so she is like just so out of touch with reality. And she's like. Begging, there's like this scene that's kind of this crazy contrast of this character, right? Which makes sense. But it's like, it's, it's these two sides of the same coin for this character, right? This Norma Desmond. Where on one hand, she's begging Mr. DeMille to put her in stuff again. She's ready to work. She wants to work. She's begging to work. But then with the same breath tells him that she doesn't work early and she has to be out of here early. She's like... She's begging for work in one second, and the next second she is the same diva that she's always been, as if she's, you know, the, the big superstar, which she thinks she is. 
which is uh, kind of, was a funny like moment in that scene where she goes to the studio. It's like, oh, she is just she 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 can't she can't like beggars can't be choosers it's that thing she's trying to choose and beg at the same time and neither of them are going to work because they don't want her they just want her car and then meanwhile this writer he has a friendship with this woman who is like part of the writing thing she wants to be a writer but she wants his help with her writing she has some ideas for scripts so there's like kind of this side like friendship that's happening between these two people that want to be writers but then he gave up on writing but it ends up being like this thing that he does in secret. Which is kind of an interesting thing. Because normally a movie would be like, oh, he's just sleeping with somebody else. But it's like the main thrust for that like secret relationship is for writing. He's like going over to help this other woman write a script. Join Inspired Disorder Plus today. Head on over to inspireddisorder.com slash plus to join. Membership includes members-only discounts and deals. You get access to the Ray Taylor Show completely ad-free, as well as bonus episodes. You get access to the complete live painting archive. You also get access to every single podcast ever produced by Inspired Disorder, hosted by Ray Taylor. You get access to Ray Taylor's personal blog, as well as the opportunity to ask me any questions. So if you want to start a podcast, you're into art, ask me anything. And so many more things are being added every day to Inspire Disorder Plus. So sign up today, become a member, head on over to inspiredisorder.com slash plus and become an Inspire Disorder Plus member today. And then we find out that the, you know, the husband, the servant was her old, was her first husband that he is still writing the the fan mail that she gets keeping her he keeps he makes her think that she's still desired in the public but yeah by the end of this movie like you're on this ride you're seeing this character kind of lose his path in writing you're seeing this other person that's on their downward trajectory pulling him down with her slowly unraveling and you see how the complexities that are around her that kind of facilitate facilitate the fact that she's crumbling apart slow in slow motion and then you have that final scene right where it, now it's after the events of that dude floating in the pool and she's so gone that just the fact that the media is there she thinks like she in her delusion she is back on set which instead her her house is filled with cops and reporters because this murder just happened in her house but she is so gone mentally that the sight of cameras and lighting equipment makes her think that she is back on set, that her career is back on, on track. And it has the, the classic line that's constantly misquoted. All right, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up. Which I think that quote was misquoted in another movie, and that's what most people are quoting. I think it was a Robin Williams quote, I think, in like Mrs. Doubtfire or something like that. But uh, classic line that is tragic it's a tragic line because she thinks that mr demille is there in her house or that she is her house is now in the studio and she as she's like walking down gliding down these stairs as if she is the star and everybody's eyes are on her it, it is so much the idea of that is so similar to the ideas of like scream four to like jump to a completely different type of a movie but the killer in that movie, in Scream 4 that didn't want it, wanted to become famous for doing... Like, they did a crime in order to become famous. They, the fame is what they wanted more than anything. And that's what this actress wants more. She wants to have that fame back in her life. 
so much so that it doesn't matter who dies like like it, it death killing somebody made her in her own mind famous again and it's 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 great it's great uh tragic and it's like just seeing everybody's reaction to her thinking that she's in some kind of paramount production as she's about to be arrested is like like it it's you can't help but feel sad for this character that throughout the course of this movie has been crumbling apart slowly in in slow motion i keep messing crumbling apart in slow motion so much that one line is so much of what this movie is it was the it was gillis crumbling apart with when, when it comes to his art when it comes to his writing right although he started finding that again with this other character but as far as the downward trajectory of norma desmond it was a non-stop trip uh to downwardsville uh to eventually being arrested now the fact that the amount of police and 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 press that show up and are just inside of her house is ridiculous <laughs> like like there would be a barricade the press wouldn't be able to get in but to make that scene pop the way it does you need to have all of these people in there with cameras like they have like even her her husband max the 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 servant is acting as director telling the cameras to like turn on and, and like action and all that stuff it, it's a great movie a great movie about like just the 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 dark side of fame and like people's need to be famous and what that can do to a person like there there could easily be like you could easily do a remake of sunset boulevard that is uh, a vine star like somebody that got really popular on vine or some other social media and then that social media went away and now it's like now what do i do they like struggle to like sell tickets on a tour like that you could you could easily do that but then have it even a younger character have it somebody that's like 13 and then by the time they're 15 uh that that social media platform's not around and you see the the slow <laughs> the uh crumbling apart in slow motion of of uh what fame can do to a younger person um but yeah a great great movie uh super interesting characters as always well written voiceover very very beautifully written voiceover uh, a story that got me sucked in to where i forgot how it even started uh just a, a great movie top to bottom and i'm glad i finally got to watch it uh, one of the greats from Billy Wilder, for sure. Uh, so I highly recommend checking it out if you get a chance. The movie is Sunset Boulevard. Check it out. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. And follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Out! Today, Today is, is the, the day, day where, where you wake, wake up and you realize, and realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.